China is set to begin construction of a molten salt nuclear power plant in the Gobi Desert, using thorium as fuel instead of uranium. This innovative reactor, which doesn't require water for cooling, will use liquid salt and carbon dioxide to transfer heat and generate electricity. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you can subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. Let's continue. Thorium, being more abundant than uranium, alleviates concerns over potential uranium shortages. Scientists estimate that China's thorium reserves could meet the country's energy needs for 20,000 years. The reactor is expected to be operational by 2029, generating up to 60 megawatts of heat, with part of this energy driving a 10 megawatts electric power unit and the rest producing hydrogen. The Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics, Chinese Academy of Sciences, will construct and operate this small, modular reactor. The project aims to drive technological advancements in materials and high-end equipment manufacturing, contributing to China's energy independence. Currently, the only operating thorium reactor is an experimental one in the Gobi Desert, producing 2 megawatts of thermal power without generating electricity. This reactor incorporates revolutionary technologies like superalloys that withstand high temperatures, radiation, and chemical corrosion. The success of this pilot project has laid the groundwork for larger reactors capable of power generation. Thorium-based molten salt reactors have potential military applications due to their compact structure and safety, such as powering naval ships, submarines, and aircraft. The new reactor will be located west of the experimental reactor, occupying an area smaller than a soccer field. Molten salt carrying thorium fuel will enter the reactor core, undergo a chain reaction, and transfer heat to non-radioactive molten salt, which will then drive a carbon dioxide-based gas turbine for power generation. The project includes additional facilities like a research center and a spent fuel processing plant. Over 80% of the spent fuel material will be recycled, with the remaining radioactive waste solidified into glass and transported to a national nuclear waste disposal site in the Gobi Desert. Unlike uranium fuel reactors, thorium reactors pose no threat to the environment if the molten salt drops into a container below the reactor. The new reactor will primarily serve research purposes, with additional energy facilities like a wind power base, a solar power station, and a molten salt-based energy storage power station being constructed simultaneously. These energy sources will be integrated into a smart grid to provide low-cost, low-carbon, stable electricity for industrial production. How does a thorium power plant actually work? A thorium molten salt nuclear power plant is a type of nuclear reactor that uses molten salt as both the fuel carrier and coolant, and it is designed to operate on the thorium fuel cycle. The concept of molten salt reactors MSRs, is not new, but it has gained renewed interest in recent years due to its potential for safer, cleaner, and more efficient nuclear energy production. Here's a simplified overview of how a thorium molten salt nuclear power plant works. 1. Fuel Preparation The thorium fuel cycle starts with thorium, a naturally occurring, slightly radioactive element. Thorium itself is not fissile, meaning it cannot sustain a nuclear chain reaction by itself, so it needs to be converted into a fissile material. This is typically done by first irradiating thorium in a nuclear reactor, where it absorbs neutrons and eventually becomes uranium-233, which is fissile. 2. Fuel in Molten Salt The fissile material, such as uranium-233 derived from thorium, is then dissolved in a molten salt, creating a fluid fuel. This molten salt mixture, which remains in a liquid state at operating temperatures, contains the nuclear fuel and acts as the coolant. The choice of salt depends on the design, but fluoride salts are commonly considered due to their favorable properties. 3. Reactor Core The molten salt fuel is pumped through the reactor core, where it is heated by nuclear fission. The core contains a graphite moderator to slow down neutrons, making them more effective at causing fission in the uranium-233. The heat generated in the core is transferred to the molten salt, which then carries it out of the core. 4. Heat Exchange The molten salt, now heated to high temperatures, transfers its heat to a secondary salt loop through a heat exchanger. 
This is done to prevent the radioactive fuel salt from mixing with the secondary salt, which is used to generate steam. The secondary salt transfers its heat to water, producing steam, which then drives a turbine to generate electricity, similar to conventional power plants. 5. Electricity Generation The steam turns a turbine, which is connected to a generator. The generator produces electricity. After passing through the turbine, the steam is condensed back into water and can be used again in the secondary loop, making the process highly efficient. 6. Fuel Processing and Refueling One of the advantages of MSRs is their ability to be refueled online, meaning they do not need to be shut down to add fuel. The molten salt can be continuously processed to remove fission products and add more fissile material, allowing for a very high fuel efficiency and a long operational life without refueling. Thorium Molten Salt Nuclear Power Plants TMSRs, offer several advantages and face unique challenges compared to traditional nuclear reactors. Here's an overview of both. The Advantages of Thorium Power Plant 1. Inherent Safety TMSRs are designed to be inherently safe. If the reactor overheats, the molten salt fuel can be drained into a passively cooled drain tank, where the chain reaction stops. This is known as a freeze valve, or freeze plug, safety mechanism, which prevents meltdown scenarios. 2. Efficiency and flexibility. They can operate at high temperatures, allowing for higher thermal efficiency. This flexibility also makes them suitable for industrial heat applications and process heat, not just electricity generation. 3. Reduced Nuclear Waste TMSRs can potentially reduce the volume and radioactivity of nuclear waste. They can operate as a breeder reactor, converting thorium into uranium-233 and then fissioning it, which consumes most of the generated actinides, leaving less long-lived radioactive waste. 4. Thorium Abundance Thorium is more abundant in the Earth's crust than uranium, making it a more sustainable fuel source over the long term. 5. Proliferation Resistance The nature of the thorium fuel cycle and the design of MSRs can make it more difficult to extract weapons-grade material, potentially reducing the risk of nuclear proliferation. 6. Modular Design Many proposed designs are modular, allowing for smaller, standardized reactors that can be mass-produced and transported to sites, reducing construction time and costs. The Challenges of Building a Thorium Power Plant 1. Technical Hurdles Developing materials that can withstand the corrosive and high-temperature environment of molten salts is a significant challenge. The reactor vessel and piping must be able to handle the molten salt without significant corrosion or degradation over time. 2. Salt Processing and Handling The process of handling and reprocessing the molten salt to remove fission products and add fresh fuel is complex and requires sophisticated systems that can manage the radioactive materials safely. 3. Regulatory Framework The unique design and operation of TMSRs require new or updated regulatory frameworks. This can be a barrier to deployment, as regulations often lag behind technological innovation. 4. Economic Viability The initial cost of developing and building a TMSR is high, and without clear economic advantages over existing technologies, investors and governments may be hesitant to fund these projects. 5. Public Perception and Acceptance Nuclear energy, in general, faces public acceptance challenges due to concerns about safety, waste disposal, and the potential for nuclear proliferation. Overcoming these perceptions is crucial for the deployment of TMSRs. 6. Radioactive Salt Management The molten salt itself becomes radioactive during operation, which complicates maintenance and decommissioning processes. Developing safe and effective methods for managing and disposing of this salt is necessary. 7. Development and Operational Experience there is limited operational experience with TMSRs, which means there are uncertainties about their long-term performance and reliability. This lack of experience can also affect investor confidence and regulatory approval. Despite these challenges, the potential benefits of thorium molten salt nuclear power plants have spurred interest and research in several countries. 
Advances in materials science, reactor design, and safety systems could help overcome these hurdles and make TMSRs a viable option for clean energy production in the future. Starting in 2030, China plans to construct commercial modular thorium-based reactors with an electric generation capacity of 100 megawatts or more. Chinese shipbuilders have also unveiled a design for a giant container ship powered by this molten salt reactor, potentially revolutionizing human logistics. The world's first thorium-based molten salt reactor was built at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the United States in the 1960s but faced technical challenges and was permanently closed in 1969. Recently, TerraPower, founded by Bill Gates, has been collaborating with Oak Ridge Laboratory to restart the thorium fuel reactor project. While some scientists remain skeptical about the feasibility of this technology, China is investing in various new generation nuclear power technologies, including high temperature gas cooled reactors, sodium cooled fast reactors, accelerator driven reactors, and lead cooled fast reactors. The Shidaoan High Temperature Gas Cooled Reactor, the world's first commercial fourth generation nuclear power station, was connected to the grid in December 2023. China aims to have 150 advanced reactors by 2035, surpassing the combined total of the United States and France. Currently, China is growing at a rate of 6 to 8 nuclear reactors per year using self-developed new technologies. If you like the content in this episode, please also check out our other videos on this channel and subscribe for more updates on China's innovative technologies and their impact on the world. That's all we have for now, and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching our China Tech Update. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, like, and share our video. We will bring you more similar contents like this one. Thank you again for watching.